Hotep. Hotep is a greeting that means peace in the ancient Kemetic language, and Mwalimu means teacher in Kiswahili and is the English uh, equivalent to professor. My name is Mwalimu Melody Mishere Van Putten, and this is Mwalimu Dropping the Knowledge. Good people, some of you may recall that a number of years ago, I was a recurring radio guest on the Sherry Simmons radio show for uh, the segment that was called Community Healing. For a, a year and a half, Sherry and I would discuss the state and health of our community from politics to finance to education, especially education. We had a series of wide-ranging and often profound conversations and discussions that stopped the phones from ringing and had people literally listening, recognizing my voice, and so I'd be minding my own business, buying fish in the market, and someone would come up to me and say, aren't you, aren't you? So on this very special episode of Mwalimu Dropping the Knowledge, I am excited to have my first in-studio guest, none other than Mrs. Sherry Simmons, for a conversation with Mwalimu. First though, let me ask her, let me welcome you, Sherry. Thank you and welcome to and while we drop in the knowledge please tell the audience just a little bit about yourself oh well thank you so much for having me first off it's such an honor uh, to be here to join you it's been quite some time since we, we've had an in-depth yes. conversation yes so it's good to be able to join you today and, and do that well I'm just a, a regular gal I really <laughs> I really am um, I've spent the the bulk of my career in electronic media I started out doing uh, broadcast media. I started out actually as a DJ and then transitioned into journalism. Uh, went back to my, my first calling, which is really radio. I'm a radio girl at heart. And uh, for a number of years, had a talk show. I was very honored to be able to, to talk about very deep issues yeah. with persons like yourself and just entertain the best audience in the world. I'm also a mom. I'm a wife, and again, I'm just a, a regular gal who... A, a wonderful gal at that. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Who just, who, who wants the best for my people. I want my people to, to be everything they can be. Yes, and that's yeah. where you and I have always been aligned in terms of wanting the very best in trying to enlighten and engage our people in important conversations that we normally don't have. So let me begin by just asking you to share how you feel the state of our community is right now. It's in flux, but in a good way, I think. Uh, is our, our people are always evolving and we're always, we're, we're growing um, in, in ways that we never dreamt of before. And why I say it's in flux, because in many ways, we have our challenges and we always do because of our experiences. But then I, I see the, the pockets and the bright sparks as well. I had the privilege of attending a, a wedding ceremony yesterday, just yesterday. And I saw young people who were there and they were vivacious and they were college aged and, and just, so sure of who they were mm -hmm. in here I am, particularly as, as a black Bermudian. Mm -hmm. They were unapologetically mm -hmm. who they were. So that, and, and it was such a pleasure. It was such a pleasure to see that as, a, as an, a, someone who's moving into the elder <laughs> category now. Mm -hmm. it, it really was a pleasure to see that because it says to me that we are making progress in ways that sometimes we don't even really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time when young folks just being young folks would be oh you need to hush up you need to you know everyone's watching you right. you know the, right. as to use the term the white gaze yes and I saw a group of young people who were confident in who they were they were confident in their abilities and they were not concerned about what other groups of people 
we're thinking about what they're doing and their trajectory. So. Well, that is certainly yeah. a, a welcome uh, evolution, if you will, because the white gaze has been something that we have been dealing with since time memorial. Yes. Um, particularly since the time of enslavement when the overseer was constantly watching us. And you still feel that, particularly in professional settings, that you, know, you walk this straight line trying to not be too much of yourself Hence the white gaze, and sometimes that's even the black gaze. Oh, yeah, you know. That, yeah, you know. and that is yeah. That, that of course stems from our our experiences, and it oftentimes the unfortunate things that sometimes happens. Some of these coping mechanisms that we've developed over centuries, over generations, we think that's who we are. Mm. We actually think that fundamentally that that is who we are. No, those were. Uh, coping mechanisms that that we had to do in horrendous circumstances. Absolutely. So when you're placed in horrendous circumstances, and this is any group of people, this is no, so not about being black. This is about the reality of a group of people that were placed in inhumane conditions for centuries and some of the dysfunctional coping mechanisms that we had to develop in order to survive that horrific experience. Exactly. So a lot of that is left over and we've come to think that sometimes we think that that's who we are intrinsically. And that's not who we are intrinsically because if you data and study after study will show that if you take an oppressed group of people, people who have experienced uh, even just a quarter of what we have experienced, you will start to see certain behaviors. Yes whether it be addiction, whether it be uh, intraviolence, whether it be, and that's because of their experiences, but that's not who we fundamentally are. Right, and that begs the question around education because the only way you really know who you are is to go before the oppression began. Yes. Right, so on that score, what about education today? It is, I, I think people are recognizing that it doesn't serve the needs of our children. And that, that in and of itself, I think, is a huge, is a huge step. Um, you have individual families and parents who are recognizing that, and thus, you know, participating in the Ashe program, even years ago, when there was that huge controversy yes. <laughs> surrounding the Ashe program, yes. there were still pockets of people who understood what you were doing, yes. who understood the need for that. Now, you know, no good deed goes unpunished, as, they, <laughs> you know, as, as, as the saying goes, and it has admittedly taken a lot longer but now I think there's a wider uh, degree of acceptance that it, what our children have been taught, particularly from a historical perspective, does not serve them, um, particularly emotionally and, and mentally, and it doesn't prepare them for what, it, you know, what you need to have to really succeed in life. That's and when right. I say really succeed in life, I'm not just talking about financially, because there are a lot of people who have done quite well financially, but in other areas of their lives, are they're not happy. They're, they're not happy and they're struggling. Yes, yes. And I think that's, that's where we're recognizing that that needs to change. Mm -hmm. Now what that will look like is another story. Is, uh, is, you know, is, another, is another story. I know with the signature schools that they're doing now, um, I'm hoping that some of these core needs will be addressed. But that, that does come down to understanding the purpose of education. Right. And I don't think that people really understand the political purpose of education, yes. which is to maintain the status quo, which is one reason why the Ashe program was always controversial, because it said, no, that's not who we are. This is who we are. And there are folks that are still threatened by that, which is one reason why it was never reinstituted in the public schools. But also, when we talk about, and it, it's pointed that you talked about the young people you encountered who know who they are. This is where self-study or seba is important because we cannot depend on systems outside of ourselves to properly educate us. It is also one of the reasons why I have spent the last 10 years writing books that parents and grandparents can educate themselves in order to educate their children because most ethnic groups 
they had that cultural indoctrination within their own churches or synagogues or mosques. They don't depend on outside systems. In fact, if the only education your young person gets is in a school where the public or private, they're not fully educated. There has to be a, a sense of cultural education at home uh, yeah. where education really should begin with parents and grandparents. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was speaking with a member of the Jewish community, a leading member of the Jewish community here in Bermuda, and we were just talking about, of course, some of the historical aspects coming from both of our, you know, our various community experiences. And one of the things that you talk about is it's your culture's responsibility to pass on the knowledge, to pass on the traditions, et cetera, et cetera. And the Jewish community is very clear about that, and rightly so. Yes. Uh, that is one area that I often say, and I said this uh, to the individual that I was speaking to, to that you know we need to take a page out of that book yes. We really do need to take a page yes. out of that book um, but I understand I, I understand I fully understand why it's difficult for the black community to do that because in so much as we certainly are not the only group of people that have ever been under held captive under oppressive conditions certainly you'll often hear that people say oh other groups have that mm -hmm. that's true but we are only no other group has the experience in terms of the length of time Yes. The degree to the which degree, it happened. The extent. The extent to which it happened. Yes. No other group. We are, you know, we are separate and apart from other groups. Yes. Now, in that experience is we were taught we're not good at gatekeeping. No. And part of the reason why we're not comfortable with gatekeeping is we haven't had very much over this side of the world, that is. In our Western experiences, uh, we haven't been allowed, all of those things were taken away from us. We view gatekeeping, and what I mean by gatekeeping is simply boundaries. Mm. That you say to other groups of people, you can come here, but you, you go no go further. There. Right. You go no further, and every other group does that, including the Jewish community. The Portuguese community does it. Yes. Every, you know, all every group the, does it. You know, the Italian community does it. Every group does it. The reason why we are not comfortable with that, because of our experiences, we view having boundaries as being discriminatory. Yes, and because, that is, and we, we we've learned the lesson. We've been miseducated, to, yes. to use that term. We've yes. been miseducated in terms of the purpose of what boundaries are for. Right. And in fact, boundaries yeah. have been used to keep us at, exactly. in a certain place. And so breaking out of those boundaries always has a bit of danger in our minds. You know, like, let's, let's bring it back in. We don't want to be discriminatory. At the same time, if we don't protect us, if yes. we don't advocate for us, who's supposed to do it? And well, why? Well, see, that's see, the that's thing. And the reason why I go back to us being uncomfortable with boundaries, again, it, it, it wraps back around to our experiences that we have been so inculcated with the idea that if we say, no, you can't do this to us, people say, oh, you're being you know, discriminatory. And we say, oh, no, we don't want to do that because of our experiences. And we don't want anyone to be discriminating. Not understanding that boundaries are healthy. It's how you have a healthy community. That's it's like right. a marriage, for example. There has to be boundaries in your marriage. If there are no boundaries, then your marriage is not healthy. You'll suffer financial abuse. You'll yes. suffer all sorts of abuses if you don't say, I will take this. However, I will not take Yes, you know, and in I fact, will not take that. that goes for all relationships. Any relationship. Yes. Yeah. Well, we will be right back with my conversation with Sherry Simmons.